Hello, and welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. We are actually discussing about common errors. This is module number 12 and lecture number 2 on common errors. This is a continuous lecture from the one that I started uh, in the previous day. Now, let's look at some more errors. And then before we look at some more errors, let me ask you the same question once again. What are common errors? So I gave uh, a simple definition for common errors in the previous lecture. Common errors are deviations from standard English usage. Now, the deviations can happen in terms of grammar, in terms of spelling, in terms of pronunciation, in terms of punctuation. So the standard usage, and then the moment you deviate from it, and then cause confusion to sophisticated users of English. So you are committing common errors. Now, why you should overcome them, I al already told you that there are certain advantages. But again, before going to the advantages, I want to tell you even punctuation, which most of us ignore, can also play havoc in your effectiveness to communication if you ignore it. Punctuation affects the clarity of communication if it is not handled properly. A misplaced comma, for example, or apostrophe can change the meaning of a sentence and often in confusing ways. Look at the following example that I have shown here. The simple use of punctuation and not using it. Look at the first sentence, which is very cl clear. Let's eat, grandma. So this is an uh, invitation, request, asking grandma to come and uh, sit with the children. And then maybe the children are requesting the grandmother, saying that, let us eat. Please come, grandma. So let's eat. The comma is suggesting that calling the grandma is a different activity. But look at the next one. It's creating a very disastrous and funny situation. Let's eat grandma, meaning let's eat grandmother. So it's ridiculous. It's not possible unless the children happen to be cannibals and uh, humanly not possible. But uh, forget the illogical one. The error is caused because of the misuse of comma or not using comma here at all to distinguish that the meaning is different from what is implied when the comma is removed. So take care of this punctuation, apostrophe. So even when you use inappropriately, it can cause a lot of confusion. Now keeping this in mind, let's look at what advantages you will get if you are able to use communication effectively by avoiding common errors. Now, effective communication actually relies on use of grammar, spelling, and punctuation. So your grammar, if it is accurate, spelling is correct, and punctuation, there is no misgivings, then the communication automatically becomes effective. Now, in that case, avoiding common errors ensures your speech as well as writing and it gives clarity and it makes them precise, comprehensible and free from ambiguity. So when you speak, the speech will be free from ambiguity, which means you say one thing and the audience will not understand that you are saying something other than what you are trying to convey. They do not misunderstand the meaning of what you intend, so they take what you mean. So there is no sense of ambiguity. It is clear, it is precise, and it is free from sense of ambiguity while you speak, while you write. So that amounts to good communication. Then how about the readers or your audience? When you use good communication, when you speak clearly, when you speak without mistakes, actually the readers and audience will not notice it. This is an interesting fact. They will not notice as long as the communication goes very smoothly and very spontaneously and without any hitch in terms of communication errors. They will not notice it, but they will notice it. They will observe if you commit some errors in terms of grammar, spelling, punctuation, pronunciation, and if it is so glaring, and if it makes them reread the material or it 
makes them stop your communication and seek pardon from you for asking you to repeat it again, then you are likely to have committed common errors, some errors at least. So the interesting fact is, when the grammar is good and the usage is proper and you are able to make proper pauses, the audience will not stop you, the audience will not even notice that you are a good communicator because the communication is going very smoothly. However, the audience will take note if you are a bad communicator in terms of English language usage. So this you should keep in mind if audience are troubling you when you give a talk or if your readers come and tell you that your writing is unintelligible, you should know that you are careless in terms of maybe committing spelling mistake errors. Maybe you are not creating the usual situation in which good communication should happen in terms of avoiding common mistakes. So readers note common errors easily as it forces them to reread the text or it forces them to stop you and ask you to repeat it. Then accuracy in communication, if you follow it, it causes a positive impression. I said they will not stop you, so they will read it smoothly, whatever you have written, but at the end of it, it's causing a very good impression. They feel good, they feel that they have understood whatever you have written. Now that gives a kind of satisfaction they relish the material that you have given. They feel good to listen to you. It's making them feel happy. There is a, a good sense of comfort that you have given at the end of your communication. Now, because of this, people go with a positive impression and sometimes it can also cause this lasting impression. Now, they keep remembering, okay, the talk that you gave or the material that you wrote because it was free from any kind of common errors, they go with an impression and they go with a favorable impression and they go with a lasting impression. They think of coming back to you or whatever request or demand that you put, they wanted to respond to that in a very favorable manner. And of course, you know very well that giving, causing that kind of favorable impression is very important in professional as well as in academic communication situations. And of course, I keep telling you, it not just professional and academic, also in personal level uh, communication it is important, but it is all the more important in professional and academic communications. So you have to keep thinking about the fact that you need to create positive impression and if you want to be successful in your professional and academic communication levels. Now spot the common errors, you've been uh, trained now, so I'm going to give you more examples. So let's look at at least about uh, 15 sentences at uh, two go. First I'm going to start with six sentences which are frequently used but then not properly used. Look at them one by one, take a piece of paper, note at least the common errors so that when I come and discuss with the answers to you, so you will be able to even score your level of uh, communication in terms of comprehension, in terms of intelligibility, you can just assess where you stand. First sentence, I am awaiting for my appointment order. I am awaiting for my appointment order. Second, I will be waiting for your reply by email. I will be waiting for your reply by email. Third. One of the girl in our class has won the prize. One of the girl in our class has won the prize. Sentence number four. One of the girls in our class have won the prize. These two sentences are similar, except there is a difference in the noun and the verb usage. So note it. One of the girls in our class have won the prize. Next sentence. Many of the rats is dead. Many of the rats is dead. And the following sentence. Much of the grind are in storage. Much of the grind are in storage. Take a look and then note down the errors, underline the errors. And I am just going to discuss the answers and explanations with you. Let us go one by one. The first one, 
the error is at awaiting for. I am awaiting for my appointment order. Now, awaiting for, we discussed before also that awaiting will not take for because await is a transitive verb. So, it can have a direct object. It need not have that preposition in between. It can take the object directly. So, the correct answer is I am awaiting my appointment order. I await your reply. I am awaiting my appointment order. I await your reply. So, it can take the direct object my, your, their, etc. Whereas, in case of the usage of the word wait or waiting, look at the given example. I will be waiting your reply by email. Waiting your is wrong because the correct form is I will be waiting for your reply by email. Waiting will take the preposition for in the sense of awaiting. So, wait is an intransitive verb and cannot have a direct object. So, it needs to have that preposition in between the object and the preposition that is usually used is for and it must be added especially if you use wait in the sense of awaiting. So, for is used. So, waiting for your reply by email. Look at the next example or the two examples dealing with one of. The error here is in the part of the usage of the noun. One of the girl in our class has won the prize. Now, one of the girls in our class have won the prize. So, the error is in the first part, the girl. In the second sentence, the error is in the verb part, have. Now, let us look at the reasons for these errors. First, one of or any other number of. It can be two of, many of, a majority of. Now, all these ones, whenever you use in terms of number of in that sense, it must be followed by a plural noun or pronoun. So, that is the convention. So, if you say one of, always it is one of the boys, one of the girls, one of the teachers, one of the chats, one of the tables, two of the girls, three of the children. So, the next part that is the noun or the pronoun should be always in the plural form. Now, if you look at that rule, so, the first one is defying that rule and there is an error committed here. It should be one of the girls. One of the girls in our class has won the prize. So, that is the error there. So, usually you tend to think one of looks singular and so you should have a singular noun or pronoun which is incorrect. So, one of the girls also means only one girl, not many girls. So, she is the only one whom you are referring to. Okay. Now, look at the next one. The first part is correct. One of the girls, that first part is correct. One of the girls in our class. So, as per the rule, it obeys. But look at the second part where the verb is used, have won the prize. Now, the error committed here is thinking that girls is a plural form should agree with the plural form of the verb have is wrong, is incorrect because one of the girls in our class has won the prize is the correct answer for the reason has agrees with one of the girls indicating both are singular subjects. Here the verb is singular because subject is one not girls. Even one of the girls is referring to one singular girl, not the girls in plural form, in collective form. Okay. So, the correct form is one of the girls in our class has won the prize. One of the girls in our class has won the prize. So, one has. So, that is the agreement. So, that solves this error. Look at the next one. Many of the rats is dead. What is the error here and why the error has been caused? First, let us look at 
the error from that angle. So that will make you remember why it has been caused. If you look at it, many, and since it was said before that whenever this plural form is there, you should use the plural verb. Okay. Now here, many refers to number, just like one was referring to a singular one. Here, many refers to many in number, the plural form, and is plural. So, if you use the previous logic, thinking that one, you used a singular form, so here also you will use a singular one, then it becomes an error. Because here, many is plural, and hence, many of the rats are dead. So, many plural, plural form agrees with are, plural form of the verb. Similarly, if you want to use much in terms of referring to amount or quantity, you cannot use many and you should use much only. Much refers to amount or quantity and is singular unlike many. So hence, much of the grain is in storage. So much of the grain or in storage is incorrect because much Although in a sense is indicating large quantity, in terms of subject verb agreement is singular. So it will take a singular verb, not or, but is. So the correct answer is much of the grain is in storage. Shall we go to the next sentence? So next let us look at a uh, few more sentences at a stretch. So there are about uh, totally 15 sentences right now and 6 we have seen. Let us go to the sentences from 7 to 15, one by one. Seventh one, when do you have the dinner? When do you have the dinner? If you think some error is there, underline it, and then we will discuss the answers soon. Look at the next one, I play the hockey, I play the hockey. Underline the error, spot the error. And nine, probably there are two errors uh, in this one, or you can spot easily more than one error in some of the sentences. Look at this. Chinese live in the China. There are two errors in this. Chinese live in the China. A very simple sentence, looks easy to say, but then there are two errors. Identify the two errors, and both of them are commonly committed errors. Look at number 10, Chinese speak the Chinese, which means Chinese people speak Chinese language. So in that sense, Chinese speak the Chinese. Identify the errors. Again there are two errors in this one. Look at the next one, the eleventh one. She has worked hardly today. What you wanted to say is, uh, she put in strenuous work. She worked rigorously in that sense and you wanted to say that. So she has worked hardly today. Very rigorous work. Now twelfth one, Deepika is more taller than Karina. Deepika is more taller than Karina. Identify the error. 13. Madhuri refused to answer to me. Madhuri refused to answer to me. And 14. We approached to the house. We approached to the house. And fifteenth one, we entered into the room. We entered into the room. Hope you have quickly identified the errors. Let us look at the answers and explanations. Now the seventh one, a very interesting one. When do you have the dinner? It is very easy to say this, but the article the is not used before the names of meals in general. 
or in a routine sense you usually ask when do you have dinner when do you go for breakfast what do you had for breakfast i have breakfast at 7 am in the morning in all these cases the article is not used but you will also use the if you particularize it if you specify the meal if it is a special meal or if it is arranged for a particular occasion if you specify that particular one which is unusual than the general ones that you been routinely taking each day so then there is a difference then you use the in this case the dinner will be held at the taj mahal hotel or the dinner will be held at the taj hotel now here this dinner is not referring to the usual dinner that you have every night but this is referring to a special dinner that is given on a special occasion and then the venue is specified here this can also mean the dinner will be held at the taj hotel but the lunch will be served somewhere the breakfast for tomorrow will be served in a different venue so here each case the meals happen to be specified so when it is specified only you use the but in a general sense in a routine sense you should not use the article the look at the next one again an interesting example in terms of use of articles i play the hockey now most of you play hockey you know that uh, you must be using this kind of expression but then the is not used before names of any games okay it's not used before names of games it's not just i play hockey without the you should also say i play chess i play cricket i play carrom board i play tennis i play badminton i play basketball so all these games will not take the article the look at the next example again interesting because there are two errors in this and then as i said these two are commonly used errors chinese live in the china now look at the first one i am starting with the one on the right side the is not used before the names of countries so you cannot say the china the france the italy the india the germany if you actually want to refer to the country you cannot say before the proper noun of the name of a country the cannot be used so here the correct form is without the it is china now let's come to the first part very soon but before that you should know one more exception to this rule the exception to the rule is the is used before a country that is made up of smaller units or constituent parts like the united states of america the us as or before the united kingdom the netherlands now in all these cases they are all constituent parts of the nation or they are put up by smaller parts smaller units put together now in that sense the is used otherwise normally when you refer to any country with regard to the name of the country the is not used now this part i corrected chinese live in china so this part is clear it is corrected but what about the first part chinese is it right no if you are using that in terms of referring to the people it's not correct look at uh, this rule the is used before the inhabitants of a country collectively or as a community when you refer to them collectively or as a community when you are trying to specify them in the communal sense then the should be used so the correct form is the chinese live in china the chinese live in china so here article is required 
here article is not required. But the is not used before their languages. When you talk about their language just as a name, noun, so then it is not used. Which means you do not say Chinese speak the Chinese. If you refer to the Chinese as language, it is incorrect. It will be Chinese only, referring to the language. So here, similar example is the French speak French. Okay. And look at the previous part. Chinese, in terms of the people, is also wrong. So it should be the Chinese, referring to the people, speak Chinese, the language. So when it is language, the is not required. When it is people, the is required. Now, look at this complete sentence. Three different uses. The French, referring to the people, the French people. Speak French, referring to the language where article is not required. And live in France. Again, it's not the France. Article is not required here because it's referring to the country. So if you remember this sentence, you will not commit a lot of errors. Keep remembering this sentence. It will uh, help you to avoid article errors when you talk about uh, countries and their people. And of course, their languages also. Look at the next example. She has worked hardly today. She has worked hardly today. Now. Most of you know the difference, you do not commit this error, but I just want you to note this, this is still a commonly committed error, because people do not distinguish between hard and hardly. Now both are adverbs, hard means diligently, strenuously, rigorously, working very hard, in the sense working very strenuously, taking lot of efforts, but hardly Ironically, interestingly, it's the opposite of hard. It means barely, scarcely, almost not. You can say never, seldom, in that sense, very rarely, bare minimum, not even that. So in that sense, hardly is used. So when you want to price somebody for the fact that the person worked very hard, and when you say hardly, you may be actually insulting the person. When you say she has worked hardly today, you actually mean she didn't work at all. When you wanted to price her and say she worked really hard. Okay. Now, the correct form is she has worked hard today. Now look at the next example. Deepika is more taller than Karina. What is the error here? In terms of using degrees of comparison, when you use the comparative and superlative degree, usually you form them by adding the suffixes er or est. So, fat, fatter, and est, fattest, funny, funnier, funniest, and so on. Now, you generally add these ones to form in terms of uh, degrees of comparison. So, the next levels higher and the highest levels. More and most is not used before suffixes of comparative and superlative degrees, which is causing redundancy and then it is uh, revealing that you are not a very uh, veteran, skilled user of the English language. For sophisticated users, so it will be a kind of aberrant. So, what is the correct form? Deepika is taller than Karina. It means one and the same as when you try to say more taller. You are again referring to the same thing. But probably you think that you will put more emphasis when you add more or most. But it does not actually serve a grammatical or communicative purpose. Sometimes it can cause confusion or it can create a bad impression about you. People may think that you are a very poor communicator. Okay. Now come to the next one. Similar example. Amitabh is the tallest actor in Bollywood, 
it's not the most tallest you should not use most here before this superlative form you, i hope you get my point look at the remaining examples of course all the remaining three are also wrong examples deliberately given to you with some common error or other now all of them are pertaining to one set of common errors the usage of prepositions when they are actually not required look at the sentences first madhuri refused to answer to me we approached to the house we entered into the room i have highlighted these prepositions in red color so that you understand that they are the wrong ones and they are not required here in this context what is the reason what is the explanation verbs like answer approach enter etc or transitive in english which means they can take the direct object or the direct uh, uh, one that is just next to them immediately preposition need not come in between so in this case they do not follow a preposition preposition is not placed in between but in some other languages if you literally translate that in most of the indian languages we use preposition in such cases and we tend to translate that into english and then we think that using the preposition makes sense and then we commit the error so translating from sometimes mother tongue to the native language english language native speakers language often can cause problem if you do it directly without comparing the grammatical rules in both the languages now here similar problem has happened so what will be the correct form madhuri refused to answer me is perfectly fine so there is no need to add the to answer to me answer me we approached the house no need to say we approached to the house we entered into is not required you can simply say you entered or we entered the room it sounds perfectly normal without using this into so these are errors generally we commit when we try to literally translate what we want to speak in english from our own languages so what it means that pay attention to the grammatical rules of the language that you want to use for communication in this case english and comparisons are fine you can compare that with your mother tongue but then try to see and understand the differences and once you know the difference try to internalize try to take it inside you by repeated reading writing speaking and correcting your own errors correcting the errors of in some of your cases your students or your friends okay you correct the errors and then you point out to them these are some of the common errors which you are committing because you happen to be a speaker of this language which you learnt after a stage when you have learnt your mother tongue so you are not able to get the rules directly so if you are able to do this so you'll be keep on improving your uh, language ability in terms of minimizing common errors let's look at some more sentences identify the common errors in these sentences look at them one by one as i said keep a piece of paper and then you can just mark the errors immediately and then we'll look at the answers and explanations look at sentence number 16 many people died from cholera many people died from cholera 17 balram died of overeating balram died of overeating 18 he married with my sister he married with my sister 19 she is my cousin sister 20 i'm afraid i speak english very bad i'm afraid i speak english very bad 
21. The course is for students with the basis knowledge of English. The course is for students with the basis knowledge of English. 22nd. Let me congratulate you for your grand success in the civil service exams. Let me congratulate you for your grand success in civil service exams. I hope you have identified at least some of the errors. Cross check with me whether the answers are correct or not. Look at the uh, first two sentences. Both are related to each other. Especially this is with regard to using the word died. And what preposition goes with that? Is it from, of or can both be used in different senses? So the answer is the first and the second both are wrong in this usage. 16. Many people died from cholera. From prepositionally it is wrong usage. And 17, Balram died of overeating, again died of overeating is also wrong. The preposition of is incorrectly used here. Now what are the correct answers and what is the logic behind this? Now generally when you talk about people dying, people die of a disease or illness. So people die of cholera and this is the correct one. You can say many people died of cholera, so and so died of malaria, she died of typhoid, he died of cancer. You can use any disease, illness, but then the preposition that should go before is not from but of. Now in the other case, when generally you refer to people dying from doing something, then the preposition from comes, as in this case the correct one is from. So Balram died from overeating, so he did this and he died, so from overeating, whereas when it is disease it is off. Look at the next examples, he married with my sister, is a very common error that uh, people commit frequently, he married with my sister. With regard to the usage of the word married, married as a verb can be used in the transitive or the intransitive manner. So it can be used transitively or intransitively. But when you use it in intransitive sense, no preposition is needed in intransitive use. So the correct answer is, he married my sister not with my sister, not to my sister. Even uh, some people say he married to my sister, which is also wrong. He married with my sister is also wrong. Prepositions are not required when it is used in the intransitive form. So you can say he married my sister or she married my brother, not with or to, remember that. Look at the next interesting example, which is again a very common error. Particularly, uh, you will realize now that some of the common errors are common because of our cultural background also. This is one typical example, saying she is my cousin sister or he is my cousin brother. Now what is the error here? The error is with regard to the usage of cousin sister which is not acceptable by the native speakers because there is no such usage of cousin sister, cousin brother, it is simply cousin. So cousin brother or cousin sister or words developed in India through usage. Now English usage it is just cousin. Now if you look at it and ask why it is so, why it is commonly used in India and why it is not used in UK or the US. The reason is of a cultural variation. In India, so every rickshaw puller or an auto driver, you will say brother, okay, or some uh, even unknown person, you use the term sister to call. Now in US, relationships are very constricted to the close circle. So others are just cousin and uh, whether it is male or female, that is indicated of course by the names. 
or when the names are used, people understand whether it is uh, or what is the gender of the person to whom it is addressed to. So, in our case, we just add it to indicate the gender and then we also uh, kind of relate it usually in terms of sister or brother, which is incorrect in standard English. So, in English usage, it is just cousin. The correct form is, she is my cousin, he is my cousin, it is not he is my cousin brother, it is simply he is my cousin. Look at the next example again, I am afraid I speak English very bad. Now, what is the error here? The adjective bad is used in place of the adverb badly. So, speaking very badly, so the adverb is qualifying this, the act of speaking in a very bad manner. So, bad is wrongly used, it should be badly. So, the correct form is, I am afraid I speak English very badly. Let us look at the next few examples. 21, the course is for students with the basis knowledge of English. Now, here again error of using adjective or noun instead of the one using the other. Look at this. Do not use a noun that is basis in the place of an adjective basic. Okay, confusing noun with adjective and in the previous case it was adjective with adverb. So, do not make such confusions which will lead to common errors. So, the correct form is the course is for students with the basic knowledge of English. The course is for students with the basic knowledge of English, not basis. And the next example is equally interesting and commonly misused by most of us that is with regard to the usage of the word congratulate. And what is the preposition that follows? Definitely not for. That is why I had indicated by red color and it is a wrong usage. Let me congratulate you for your grand success in the civil service exams. For is wrong usage. Why? Because you congratulate somebody on doing something, not for. So, the correct form is let me congratulate you on your grand success in the civil service exams. On congratulate you on your uh, golden jubilee, fifth wedding anniversary and so on. You congratulate somebody on, not for. So, remember that. Now, let us look at some more uh, errors in these uh, sentences and uh, we will close this lecture on this and then I will come back with another lecture with some more interesting examples. Look at sentence 23. She talks as if she is the prime minister of this country. She talks as if she is the prime minister of this country. Next one, 24. I enjoyed during the vacation. It is something that we usually say, I enjoyed during the vacation. So, what is wrong in this? Identify. 25. He absented from college for the entire semester. This is again commonly used by students. He absented from college for the entire semester. 26. Sujata has bought this kimono dress in Tokyo. Sujata has bought this kimono dress in Tokyo. 27. Is very fond of hearing the radio. Again, a commonly misused word is here. He is very fond of hearing the radio. Identify the error. 28. Harish is speaking a lie. Harish is speaking a lie. Have you done it? Let us look at the explanations very quickly. 23. She talks as if she is. The usage of the verb is here is wrong. The prime minister of the country. Is is wrong because generally for wishful thinking. Wishful thinking is you wish that you can be somebody, you can be something, you dream of becoming somebody something, but you actually cannot be in reality. So, that is wistful thinking. For wistful thinking, past tense form of the verb, either it was was 
or where is used. So this can be corrected like she talks as if she was the prime minister of this country or she talks as if she were the prime minister of the country, both are acceptable. Now similarly you say I wish I were an apple. So you have a nursery rhyme beginning with this uh, sentence, I wish I were an apple. There are also lyrics related to the next one, I wish I was an elephant. So look at the usage of where was indicating wistful thinking, not is, not I wish I am an apple, I wish I am an elephant. So that is wrong usage. Look at 24, I enjoy during the vacation is again a common error with regard to usage of the word enjoyed because when enjoy is used in the past form that is enjoyed a reflexive of the subject either myself, herself, himself follows the past form of the verb. So I enjoyed myself during the vacation. So this myself is required here. If you do not use it then it becomes an error. I enjoyed myself during the vacation. In the present form that is simply when you use enjoy not in the past form enjoyed. You enjoy doing something. So you say I enjoy speaking Swahili, I enjoy speaking French, I enjoy speaking foreign languages. So you enjoy doing something. Okay. Look at uh, 25, another interesting example. He absented from college for the entire semester. Here again you have to use the reflexive pronoun you absent yourself from something, you absent yourself from something which means the correct form here, he absented himself from college for the entire semester. Look at the next one, Sujata has bought this kimono dress in Tokyo. Now if you use simple past to refer to an event happened in the past that is in the remote past. You should not use present perfect, present continuous. When something has happened in the remote past, use only simple past. So the correct form here is Sujata bought this kimono dress in Tokyo. So it was bought long before, it's over. So you do not have to use the present perfect form as if it is just purchased recently. Now the last two sentences for uh, this lecture, he is very fond of hearing the radio, again the misuse of the word hearing, he is very fond of listening to the radio. The difference between hearing and listening to, if you remember, if you had listened to the lectures carefully, we already talked about during the lectures on listening skills. So hearing it was told to you, it is just physical, biological but it has nothing to do with paying attention. But when you hear physically and also pay attention, you are registering something in your mind, you are assimilating certain ideas, you are enjoying something, so then actually you are listening to. So the correct answer is, is very fond of listening to the radio. Listening to means hear and pay attention to. And finally, Harish is speaking a lie. Now here the error is with regard to usage of the word speaking. You tell the truth, speak the truth and tell a lie, but speak a lie is incorrect. You see how interesting is this. You tell the truth, you speak the truth. That means Harish tells the truth, Harish speaks the truth or Harish is speaking the truth. Harish is telling a lie is also acceptable, but Harish is speaking a lie is not acceptable in standard usage and it is incorrect. So the correct form is Harish is telling a lie. So once again go back to the books that I suggested, so get them, keep them as reference materials. One more book that I have added uh, compared to the list that I showed to you before is another old book but a very useful book especially if you are a learner of English from an Indian context. Frederick Woods remedial English for foreign students, 
it was published again way back in uh, 74, but it actually takes care of the cultural variations, the problems that Indian speakers will have when they speak foreign language, English in particular. And then the common links that I showed to you are the same one which you can refer to again and again, especially when you have doubt, even you can go to the BBC site, you can put your doubt and then you will ask the question and then you will get an answer also. So, we will meet again in the final lecture on this module that is also on common errors and I will slightly go for slightly tougher examples. So, till then I say bye and take uh, bye from you. All the best. Thank you.